Let me remind you of something today. Your sins have been permanently removed. All of them, past, present, and future, because of the power of the name of Jesus. What's up, y'all? It's Rachel Elizabeth, and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things, because it's the real, honest, hard, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. Friend, I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God. I don't even know if you truly believe, but what I know is that the truth trumps unbelief. And if God wants to use the words coming out of my mouth, to break unbelief and to bring you into the saving knowledge that he already died for all of your sins, past, present, and future, and that you are a son or a daughter of God, completely pure, righteous, set apart, justified by the blood of Jesus, made right with God forever, then he will. Because that's the power of truth. I don't know if you've seen it, but a couple years ago, I spent my birthday on Skid Row in downtown Los Angeles with one of my best girlfriends. And we did a prayer walk late at night, two girls alone with the Holy Spirit. And it was powerful. I did a vlog on it. It's called My Birthday on Skid Row. So check it out if you wanna hear those testimonies. But in short, God used the power of truth spoken to a woman living on the street, struggling with drug abuse, who had struggled with relationship after relationship that was destructive and toxic to set her free. By all appearances, we never would have approached this woman, let alone spoken the things we spoke to her. But because of the love of God, because of the draw of the Holy Spirit and the truth that he has written on our hearts, we were able to see this woman the way he sees her and speak words that maybe she has never heard before. And if you had overheard what we were saying to her, you might be tempted to think we were full of it because we're sitting here telling this girl that she is pure, that she is clean, that she is royalty, that she is the beloved of God, that Jesus is pursuing her and always has been, that she is free, that she is valuable, that she is wealthy, that she is beautiful. These things through human eyes would have looked and sounded like lies. This woman, by all experience of the five natural senses, seemed to be none of those things. Living on skid row, needing a shower <laughs> desperately, eyes without hope, full of shame and regret. But this is the power of the truth. When we spoke those words, we had her full attention we spoke the truth and the truth cut straight to her heart. And what happened next was nothing short of miraculous because she began weeping. She began confessing sin and repenting. And the story is more than that. But it was absolutely incredible to see this immediate transformation happen. And not only that, but I got word later that she had checked herself in to the women's shelter and was actually getting help. She was off the streets and she was excited about her journey. I wish I knew where she was at now, but I believe 100% that she is in the hands of the Father and he's walking with her through everything that she was previously unaware of his love for her in. Love covers a multitude of sin. When you believe, not when you clean yourself up, but when you believe, you're saved. It's God's job to sanctify us. Our job is simply to agree with who he is and who he says that we are. I don't know which of you needs to hear this today, but there is truth for the lies you've been believing. And those lies may not be lies that you are aware of because the nature of deception is to convince you that those are the truth and that they aren't actually lies. Or you are so convinced of the lie that you don't even recognize that you're being deceived. So I'm going to take a moment now to speak truth that the Holy Spirit puts on my heart that you can find in the Word of God because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Jesus is the Spirit of the Lord and Jesus 
is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. And if He is the truth, and the truth can set you free, then I'm going to share truth with you today. The truth is that your sin, everything that has separated you from intimacy with God, your Creator, your Father, has been removed permanently, past tense, already gone. You are clean. Jesus died because he loves you, because that was the only way to defeat death, to wipe out sin, because his pure blood was the substitution that was required. He became the sacrifice so that we wouldn't have to experience permanent spiritual death, that we wouldn't have to experience separation from God any longer, so we wouldn't have to experience the pain of guilt, of condemnation, of shame, of unworthiness. These things were completely destroyed, and the only reason we may still think that these are true is because we haven't experienced or heard the truth. The truth is there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation for those in Jesus. And by in Jesus, I simply mean that when he died for you in your place and rose again, he bought you back from the dead. You are now one with him. Your life is now not your own, but it is hidden in his perfection. So now when the father looks at you, he only sees the perfection of Christ Jesus. There is no shame because Jesus went to the cross for the joy set before him, which was you despising its shame. He crushed shame. He experienced shame for us. So now anything that shame tells us is a lie. And we simply need to remember the truth to shut that lie down, that you are accepted. You are chosen. You are wanted. You are beloved. You are pure. You are worthy of love. You were worth the blood of Jesus. You are valuable beyond measure. So yeah, we still live in a world where we experience real consequence for our mistakes. But because of what Jesus did in our place, we no longer have to fear wrath or punishment from God. As we keep our hope focused on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We remember what he did for us and we walk in step with him. Then we don't even have to fear that we will face consequences for things we've done because the Bible tells us that as we abide in him, we will no longer stumble. As the Bible says that anyone who continues in union with him will not sin. It says something very similar in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, where it says, be eager to confirm and validate that God has invited you into salvation and claimed you as his own. If you do these things, you will never stumble. And then back in 1 John chapter 2, it says, You are my dear children, and I write these things to you so that you won't sin. But if anyone does sin, not when, if, we continually have a forgiving Redeemer who is face to face with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And in the footnote, it says the atoning sacrifice means the satisfaction for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the world. Side note, that verse is one of my absolute favorites because it means that Jesus already washed away the sin of the world. And the only reason we still see sin in the world is because they do not know Jesus. If you keep sinning, it's because you've forgotten your innocence. You are innocent because of the blood of Jesus. Y'all, I feel so strongly that the Lord wants to show up as truth in your heart and your mind. He wants to set you free from the lies the enemy has had you believing that he isn't good or that he's disappointed in you. Those are lies from the pit of hell. He delights in you. You are his beloved son. You are his beloved daughter. You are holy, righteous, and pure. You are the head, not the tail. You are above always and never beneath. And yet you are made in the image of God and are called to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, who 
being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name. Y'all, Ephesians 2, 6 says that we have been raised with Christ and we have been seated. We are seated with Jesus in that exalted place at the right hand of God. But we're also experiencing this world. It's passing away. So we need the truth that we are in him. We need the truth that we are innocent. We need the truth that we are powerful beyond measure because this world needs bold sons and daughters of God who know their value, who know who they are, but are still willing to humble themselves to serve, to humble themselves even unto death. And the only way to do that is to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, your hope, the anchor for your soul, the source of the truth of your identity, and to persevere, even when it's a glory fire, glory sandwich, knowing and trusting that even when we don't understand, he is faithful to deliver us and rescue us unharmed from the battle waged against us that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper and that in him we are already victorious. So anything he leads us into, he will lead us through, but we will face troubles because Jesus did and he promised it. But we take heart because he's overcome and we have the promise that we will overcome because of his blood, the blood of the lamb, the power of our testimony, by right? telling the world who he is and what he's done for us, telling the world the truth of who they are, even when they can't believe it themselves, even when they look like they've been living on skid row, even when they have been living on skid row because they have forgotten who they are, or maybe no one has ever told them who they truly are. And so they're settling for what the lie has dictated. And lastly, but certainly not least, we overcome not only by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony, but do not miss this, not loving our own lives unto death. We are followers of Jesus. We are full of grace and power and our identities are pure blooded royals with the blood of the lamb running through our veins. But we need to rise up in boldness like never before. What we've seen in 2020 is nothing. What we've seen in 2020, a lot of the world experiences all the time and worse. So let's not bow to the God of comfort. Let's remember who we are, get our eyes back on our first love. Remember what he did for us and follow him knowing and trusting that whatever we walk through, he will never leave us. And he's already faced death for us so that no matter what we face, no matter what physical death we die, we will never be separated even for an instant in the spirit with him. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend who needs it. If you'd like to support this ministry in any way, there are links in the description box below, including a link to help me with my Bethel Conservatory of the Arts tuition. And you can also find links in my Instagram bio. I love you and I'm praying for you. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.